Good morning everyone. Today is the day we're going to actually start mounting some of the plastic parts, maybe even put in the front cover, but we need to put the exhaust uh, beforehand and then we're also going to go ahead and do some touch-up paint work. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're probably going to get the scooter probably wheel up to that area there. That way we can paint outside and there's no fumes inside the garage. So everything looks good. Um, everything's tied down. I put a little plastic cardboard or paper cardboard, sorry. And you can see here there is no oil leak from our event yesterday. I didn't put the brakes clamped like I should have last night but I forgot so I'll have to do it tonight uh, when we get stationed in so that'll be the last thing I'll do but you can see there's no oil leaks at all whatsoever so I guess everything is looking well what we could do right now is just a final touch as far as you know getting everything sand down so we'll get started and prepping that all the way over there so I'm gonna go ahead and start rounding the scooter over there in that location and also I want to let you know here is what we've been using to repair and everything else so maybe we could do that right now, super glue everything that needs to be glued on. I even fixed my little tripod here that broke on this end right there, you can see. Yeah, it's kind of, I guess the hex nut there cracked it open. But yeah, thanks for uh, super glue, Gorilla Glue here. This actually did pretty well. It took less than 10 seconds really. And I think I didn't even mean to get between the gaps here to leave it open, but I guess it... I just held it maybe for a split second. Now it's actually glued on there as well. But the main thing is I wanted to glue the hex bolt right on there because it broke right here on the edge right there. And it cracked over here. So this one's ready to go. I believe the screw's in here. And I'll be able to get my camera back on there. And we're actually going to not use the extension. We're going to use the anchor charger again because this 500 milliamp one is badass. Uh, it recorded for three hours and a half straight since last night. I never even had to bother with charging it. I left the magnetic tip here for it. This is how a magnetic tip looks like. But this is it. This is the anchor here. 500 milliamps. It's ready to go. And it actually knows when to stop charging. So it can conserve the battery. It's called PowerCore 5000. It's like a big, huge, I don't know what you call it, handlebar or hand grip sort of size. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. First of all, Let's go ahead and get our tripod mount thing going on here and see if that holds the test. Hopefully it doesn't break. So let me go ahead and scoot this guy back on here and see if he actually holds. Here we go. I'm going to, what it is is you push through the other side right here. So if everything goes well, he shouldn't have any break point. Should be a little stronger. And then we can start maybe super gluing the areas that we need to super glue. There we go. Look at that. See the particles of leftover residue of the super glue that's not kind of in the air. It's coming out of it. Yeah, this one tightens the ball. So that's why I can pivot it. One great about thing is I cannot find anywhere is a quick latch here. I don't know why other tripods hasn't thought of that. It's very simple. So let me see if I can get the top part. I can show you how it latches. I'm tightening it in. So far the nut has actually kept this position. It didn't spin and break off. So this is good. And we don't want it too tight anyway. So this is going to be a great part here. We've got the fan shroud in. Oh yeah, speaking of which, the fan shroud is in there. And let me show you a little bit more else we have going in here. So everything's nice and snug and secure. Blue Loctite's on there. Blue, No blue Loctite's on the plastic one because there's just no need it. So everything's looking really spick and span. Uh, our spark plug's not in there yet, nor is our exhaust. So we'll get that mounted on there. I'll probably have to cut a new one for the exhaust. So we'll work on this. We'll work on Velcroing this and we'll work on sanding the areas off to uh, prepare for our enamel spray, which we have right here. This is the enamel spray we'll be using. Enamel black, all black. So we'll get that out and open here. And where did I put the head? I always try to put things safely and yeah, I end up hiding it for myself. So anyway, so we got that there. We just need that little head to mount it on. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare this guy. What I'll do is I'll leave him plugged in even though my phone is about 98% charged already. And then I'll just kind of, comes a little carrying case, anchor carrying case. So it's pretty neat. Um, you can pick them up at Amazon. So I kind of like that. There we go. Tighten it down so it won't fall. I can't do it without the other one, but 
Okay, so I've got to plug this in. It's a micro USB, but you can always get a different attacher. It comes with a micro USB because that's still what's commonly popular right now. Just the micro USB. That's what my Note 5 is. But you can always get, you know, of course, Type-C. It's just a, you know, a power bank. So I'm going to plug that in. There we go. Everything's solid. I use this original Anchor USB cord here. It's a genuine products from Anchor. Careful, don't try to get other bootlegged version if you are trying to show for Anchor. Anchor still makes one of the best. I use everything from their charger. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hook up the front panel here. You're going to be able to see the charge. I can't believe that just disappeared on me. Well, anyway, we got a lot to do, so let's go and get started. What we do here is get everything prepped up, ready to go. Lighter, brake fluid. Okay, let's go get some sandpaper. And we're going to start sanding them down. I wish I could get my tripod latch here. I thought I had it somewhere around here. Make sure maybe I dropped it here. Nope. Huh. Still, oh, there he is. Look, he's right all the way over there. How did he get over here? There he is. See that? That's the bottom of it. Just latch on the sides, two of them like this. So you can see here how it latches. So that way I can actually clip back on. I then I have to might push this, so I'll try to push it both fingers here. There we go. See that? It sticks out. And then I just stretch this to wherever you want. It doesn't have those fancy adjustable stretching or tolerance or anything like that. But it has the most useful one is that quick latch. So this is the really one thing that I kind of favor from this, this ability to push this button and it just jumps off. <laughs> there was a video delay there, but it looked kind of funny because I heard it before I actually saw it. So yeah, so what I'll do is I'll latch this onto the phone, that way I can get stationed. It's coming onto the phone here. Ooh. All right, there we go. I got one of those magnet um, cases as well on this phone so I can actually refrigerate it or whatever, put the phone in the refrigerator. It works horrible for uh, trying to pay with credit cards because some of the credit card readers are super sensitive and you have a double magnet phone cover in the back and that just makes it worse. So I'm very pleased with this setup here. I'm just gonna do a dry feel right now to see if I see any bits of oil or anything like that, or residue along the hose line. Um, I was told that this special sleeve here could be a special, um, well, everything's special, but it could be some of those, I'm not sure what you call them, like a little cover that helps protect. Uh, I think the same thing with APM was talking about for his sleeve there that he put on his wires. I think these might be the same kind of sleeve. They're not the same as the compression sleeve that we see here. They're, these, these are just rubberized holes, right? And they have little threads in them. They're not the same, you know. Even though they look like snake skin, they don't feel like snake skin. It just feels like a pretty much a solid rubber tube. However, these feel like snake skin. So I'm thinking these might be the, the same material that people buy to put to protect their, their cover from all kinds of like fuel and everything like that. You know, their high heavy gauge duty wire. So these feel really nice. They feel cool to the touch as well, by the way. Okay, great. So everything looks clean there. I think this is pretty much tightened down to where it's so to speak. You can see it's not crossed over, which I'm very pleased for all that work that we did. Uh, getting this eye on there it was almost like a good two hour recording just to cut, snip it and everything else. So we're gonna put the decompression tube as soon as we found out our oil level. The way we do that is actually start up a motor real quick, let it siphon a little bit, let it cool down for a little bit, and then we can check the motor oil before we put the decompression tube, so that'll be lost. Now before we can crank our motor oil, I just don't want any dirt or anything to get trapped underneath that exhaust port again because it's going to blow out carb, carb, and uh, you know that little black tar ugly buildup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get ready and mount the exhaust because it's easier to get the carb to shoot out versus creating a big huge blown mess over here and you know getting our crankcase dirty and everything like that. So I think the next thing we could do is first of all we'll sand everything down or we can even mount the the car uh, the exhaust down. But then again I'd like to be able to see and access these little rust areas. So Let's go ahead and do that. Let's sand everything down. Let's get it enamel painted and everything. And then we'll go ahead and worry about putting the exhaust on there and everything else to be able to tune it and test it out and maybe even take it for a ride if we get lucky today and get everything situated. Now I'm waiting for this to actually get to room temperature right now. It's cold to the touch and you don't want to put adhesive sticker on it when it's still cold. So we might will it out to the sunlight right now and then be able to work on it a little bit even better. So we'll probably do that. We'll see. 
maybe instead of over there where it's shady, we can actually go to the sunlight more. So, but for now, we can actually still maybe start sanding it down a little bit. And I can actually start moving the bike a little bit further down that way. So, here we go. And everything is rollable. So, you guys can see me roll it. Go, take it off the center kickstand. Just kind of go forward with the bike. Gotta hold the kickstand here completely down. Look in here. Let's see if I can do this here while I'll latch this on the back here. That way we get situated. You guys can see a little down arrow view of this deal here. Hopefully my camera stays put for me long enough to break it off. It's in a kickstand. There we go. All right, we're gonna roll it back to the sunlight. Get some more sun in this area here. There we go. Good natural sunlight. Can't beat that. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. All right. Okay, cool. So we got this here in the sunlight. Hopefully get some more sun sun to warm up the thing here and it's better for sanding it anyway that way we can sand it and not have the debris fly everywhere inside the garage so let's go and get our tools ready what we're going to need to properly sand this down let's see here nope we're going to need some sandpaper a little bit of this and see if we can actually work quick enough this beautiful scooter Nice. I love that when the light hits it, it almost looks like a spanking brand new scooter. Pretty much every other parts are brand new in there. A lot of colors, huh? It's like it's decorating for Christmas. So <laughs> we're going to tie strap them really nicely. Everything eventually, once we actually sand everything down, primer it properly, then we can tie strap it because right now we're keeping everything loose. Um, definitely probably want to take the battery off maybe. That way we don't spray on it. So I can do that. But let's go ahead and start sanding down a little bit, shall we? We have the 100 grit, which is going to be our thicker sandpaper. It's going to create a lot more heavy pour. Uh, 150 is getting a little bit better. I think that's about it. So we'll probably stick with the 150. That's all we have right now, currently, I think. So let me go ahead and take the 150. This is what we're going to do is just create some teeth there for the enamel to stick properly. Just rip a little bit. You don't need a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and go to where that oil tank was that had issues there we go this is the one this one should be a pretty easy spray just get our spray on there just there we go see that we just want to be able to find it I'm using I what was it 150 yeah 150 grid sandpaper it's a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit grainy, but you can go find it if you want to. But I think this is, this is perfect. That way you can get a little bit of the edge of the paint off. Careful not to rub on your nice other shocks or components that you don't want to enamel. So what I'm gonna do is probably put some paper folded and hit the spray, because I'm not willing to take off my shocks and everything like that, just for the little details here. This one's probably be better to hit with a spray because you could probably cover a little bit more faster than if you were to try to paint over it. Take a little bit more. The paint will probably save it for a little the touch up area, the smaller area that we can't get into easily. Okay, what well, I'm doing is sanding it off smoothly so the paint will actually stay on there better. Just like you prep up anything, you know, patching up a tire or whatever. You want to get all that little spray stuff, you know. and then what you want to do is probably clean up with some alcohol get all the debris off after you scrape it or parts cleaner whichever you have or some kind of paint thinner it's anything that doesn't have an oil based lubricant because you don't want that because enamel needs to stick just like our adhesive set up there Okay, so you can see these little parts here. I 
we'll get them down. All right, it's looking spiffy. Okay, then again, we're gonna clean it off. You can clean it with some, you know, a wet cloth or whatever. Even water is fine too. But you definitely wanna dry it before you apply it. That rhymes, dry it before you apply it. Okay, this is a, yeah, a little dent mark there. A little chip mark. So we're going back to all the little rust remover that we did. And we're just making sure. Um, maybe these things right here, instead of spraying it directly, it's gonna get all over our plastic. We might actually wanna use a pen for that one. Be less mess for us, huh? You can see there. See where else they do. These guys are quite a bit here. See, we can mask much off here and then hit it with a spray can. That way it gets into all the areas that we can't really get in the corner around, wrap around. Let me go ahead and pull a chair. Sit down a little bit. I don't want to arch too long, my back might kill me. Right. That will have more energy to focus on the areas that we need to sand down a little bit better. Like right there, you know, it's just really bad. You can see there are little 150 sandpaper is enough here to not rough it too much but still get smooth enough where you can have the enamel stick anything that we can do it we'll do it might be faster now to prepare to take take the um, battery out now go that one's good A little quits area here just have to remember to come back with the spray paint on them okay so let's go ahead and look any more here I mean, this will be covered up with our exhaust anyway, but still, you know, I'd like to be able to get that smoothened out, ready to hit it with a primer. This is a really rusty bolt looking here, huh? Is that the one that we try to do our gunmetal version? I don't think so. I think it's just a whole bunch of buildup. Almost trying to scrape the rust off, really. Anything we can scrape, let's try to scrape it off. Okay. Let's go ahead and prepare the battery to be taken off shortly now. I think that's about it. I don't see any more else. Let's see back here. Let's get this one a good rub down. trying to do is just get all the loose metal off of it really this one was pretty bad here lucky this is all black anyway I hit this whole thing with a spray can see how the metal is exposed pretty easy so we're just 
pretty much getting any loose particle. I believe we come from up top here. See some of the chip marks here. This is aluminum. So we want to be really careful. <laughs> Creating a light effect on you. Wow. All right. I don't want to take too much of the, the original paint off. I just want to make sure it's a smooth surface. So when we come back with our enamel there, shouldn't be a problem. There we go. It's eating, it's eating some through here there. All right, we're, that's not too bad really to be frank with you. See this guy here? He was, remember, pretty much like a rusty color. Now he's a little bit more brighter looking. All right, let's go ahead and wipe it down with some brake cleaner or parts cleaner. And we're gonna also take off the battery there just to touch up on the final. We need a 10 millimeter to remove our battery. I'm glad we found this extension that pretty much helped us uh, pretty much put our fan shroud, especially the far left side of that. It was a little hard to get to. Okay, we got our 10 millimeter here. And I'm thinking, go where APM says, you know, remove these ugly uh, glass fuses. I mean, he, what he did was pretty incredible. I saw his wire work uh, just the other night. Um, he used a really nice, um, you know, that little thing, that like that snake skin. He wrapped the whole thing in red snake skin sort of looking. Got what he called it though, but it was badass. I think I kind of want to be able to do something like that too. Um, but again, that's 27 years of electrical experience for you <laughs> versus uh, what, less than two months. <laughs> so I'm going to go and try to do my best here. Maybe just at least replace this glass fuse one. You can see where it follows too. I don't know if it's, I'm afraid to even open this guy up here and see what the gut is like that. I mean, the only reason I can have excuse to do this right now to open this, if there was trouble in the line. <laughs> so far right now, it's not, so I'm going to keep it intact. But you guys can follow APM if you really want to do a little bit better custom wiring work because he did a great job as far as uh, hooking up the, the positive and negative wires from this right here. He had a whole new setup here. Quite a bit amazing. So let's go ahead and continue on where we're going. This is great though. I don't even have to carry the extension cord and I can probably record for three hours straight as long as I empty out my uh, phone storage. There we go. Get that broken up and loosen up. Move that guy. Ooh. Probably try to save the washer. Not have him hold it, but I know he's not going to hold it forever for us. So I'm going to try to put the washer back in here. It's going to slide. Go figure. All right, so let me get this guy here. Oh, look at this. Let's see if I can do this guy here. Booyah, look at that. Uh, sort of. <laughs> I don't want to say it yet. Yeah, I feel he's going in. We're good. <laughs> All right, let me get this washer here for this one. And then we'll drag the battery and put them inside. Now, where did he go? He slid and fell and bumped. He might have rolled too. Who knows? Should be somewhere here, but let me take him off here. Yeah, there he goes. All the way over there in that. How do you even bounce up there? Things are funny how they ricochet. Now he's leveled now here. Whew. It's getting warm now. I feel like it's almost time to put the adhesive on. Yeah, you definitely want to apply adhesive when it's a little bit warmer, uh, room temperature. 
I mean, if you really want to get the hot air, try to warm up the metal a little bit before you apply heat, so that's even better. But I think it's fine. So I'm going to go and take off my jacket because it is getting warm. Okay, so let me go ahead and prepare the, have this sit here. We're going to start uh, washing it down with some brake cleaner in the area. Paint, there's no heat up paint, anything like that. I'm gonna use my trusty again throttle intake cleaning. A little expensive just to be cleaning, uh, you know, things, but that's all we have. Oh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and finish sanding this guy off with a little pieces here. So let me break a little bit more of the. Break a little bit more of my 150 grade here. And get that guy finished up. Sand him down before we clean the area here. Did we even do this part here? This one's pretty bad. Put that one right there. Got a little gunk build up there. Yeah. All right, so where were we? Here we go. Some more exposed area to Amazing. That's why those sandblasting machine works so well because you can imagine it's doing this right here in the speed of light. Look at that one right there. That one's really bad. That's just really exposed metal and rust. Look at that. It just comes off so easily. This paint is just like really light coat. <laughs> okay. Let me get this guy out of the way. Don't want to ruin you. Need to get through you. All right. If it was up to me, if I had more time, I would took everything off and get the whole frame here, and just really sand it all down nice and good, and give it a good. You know a primer and then and then coat that'd be really off the hook but for right now we got a lot of work to do so we got most of the good products here and if the paint job is not that bad it was seriously rusty and everything to restore it yeah i would definitely uninstall everything the engine and everything taking everything out and then actually go in and blow it off so what i'm gonna do is wipe it down kind of kind of get all that out and then we'll chase it. I'll just break this in half. So we're just gonna clean the areas up. Get all that little dirt off it. See, look at that dirt. Then we're gonna spray it with some of our brake cleaner or parts cleaner. Anything, it'll just eventually get into it and dry it up. Let it dry for a second. That dirt. All the areas that we remember. I think Royals Royce have a thing where they QA it. They have a guy that goes over with a fine pin and a white glove <laughs> to really see precision if there's any imperfection. Even like a little thing like this on the bolt, like a booger or something. They they send it back to the parts factory guy to redo it. Because people are paying a, a fortune for it. So they want to stand, look at that. That is bad rust. See that? It goes right underneath the goes right underneath that layer of uh, paint that we didn't see. And this is supposed to be our stronghold for our Gibby. So the purpose of doing all this here, and that this guy was weakening on us, it'll throw a little bit off the balance. It'll still hold. But since we have it already exposed, we might as well get to our advantage and take care of it. OK. 
Okay, I'm just kind of want to dust off a little bit. You can get some water too and try to wipe it out with some water as well. See, even behind the brake lines. We sand this down. I don't think so. Let's go and get some sandpaper and sand that one down as well. There we go. Move the brake lines. I mean, move the little vacuum hose because I don't want to damage you. I just need to get through you. Oh, oh go please. You know how you can make a pad stick on a rubber tube when you're patching it? That's pretty much what you're doing the same way. Just creating that mark so that seal can actually go into the, the little teeth area and make it work. That's my favorite FedEx truck. See what else we got from NCY store. I gotcha. I just love the car. How you doing? Good. Delivery? Yeah. You sign? Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. That was a good throw last time. <laughs> good job. <laughs> I get so much prize from these guys. They're always throwing it out. All right, let's see what else we got here from. All right, see, here we go. From NCY store. Nice. All right. Let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? First of all, let me get a razor blade to open it. I'll never know. I think we got some cards that we might eat for the remaining day. I did a package slip out last. Oh, sweet. All right, some more gasket. There we go, some bolts. Oh, jets, plenty of jets here. Oh, uh, actually, fuel filter as well. What else we got? Nice. Some exhaust gasket. That's why they had to put in a long tube. Because it's a whole engine gasket. You know what's funny though? SSPG and NCY actually gets it from the same company. So this is SPSPG, and if you look at NCY, it's dead on the same. The only difference is they'll put the NCY hologram, that's it. But everything is pretty much identical. So, just want to let you know. Let's see what else is this one. Ooh, uh, some more Helix fuel lines we need. Maybe some black ones. And another coastal oil pump. Anything else more? Ah, nope, that's it. That is our stash. So, just a 